Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Salat wa salam ala sayyidin Muhammad Rasulullah. Thank you and uh, th thank you everyone who's joining us today. Inshallah, we will begin the programming. Brother Anwar will be joining us shortly. Um, today, tonight's uh, recitation by Khalif Fawad is going to be on Surah Al-Rahman, which is the 55th uh, Surah of the Quran. It is a uh, Makkan Surah. And um, some of the scholars mentioned that the Surah was actually uh, revealed as a response to the, the, the idol worshippers and the kuffar of Mecca who used to mock the Prophet Sallallahu as referring to Allah as being compassionate, Rahman, right? And um, so Allah, this was Allah's response back to, to, to them. And the first half of the surah, kind of the way the surah is broken out, it discusses the nature of uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as Rahman, as the creator, teacher, and revealer, and all the blessings he has given in the created world. And then the surah transitions to um, some of the, to some of the punishments of the hereafter, but then really the main focus in the back half is the heavens and the blessings of the heavens and the gardens. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in this, in this part, he's addressing not just the man, but he's addressing man and jinn. So one of the unique features in this uh, surah is there's one verse which is repeated 31 times. So of the 78 ayahs, there's one verse that's repeated 31 times, which is approximately 40% of the surah. And that is the, the, uh, the verse, right? Which, which translates to, which of the graces of your Lord will both of you neglect, right? Both of them, be, both being the, the, the humans and jannat. And it's amazing because Allah is talking about all these amazing blessings that he's given. And even what will happen to those people who reject, right? Um, and of the 31 times, the, it's actually broken out in the following way. The first eight are mentioning the, are followed mentioning verses that talk about the marvel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, of his creations. Followed by seven, followed by other seven verses that mention the fire and its severities, the hellfire, right? And then eight verses that mention that describe two of the gardens um, in Jannah, and then the other, the final eight talk about the two gardens that are below them. So it talks about these two different layers of these two gardens of Jannah. And it's is ironic, and the the numbers also have significance because seven is the number of the doors of the Hellfire uh, to go into the Hellfire. Whereas eight is the number of the doors uh, to each of the sets of gardens in um, that the surah is referring to. So we're in where tonight's recitation is going to begin is with surah with ayah number forty six, which is kind of a pivotal uh, ayah in the surah because this is where the transition happens from talking about uh, the hellfire to the heaven, right? It says, for those who fear standing before their Lord, there are two gardens. And this is the reward for someone who has taqwa, right? The reward in the hereafter is going to be these gardens. And it described the description of the gardens with greeneries and luscious fruit and the, the maidens and mates of, of, the, of, of the heavens that are going to be provided to those people who um, have taqwa, right, in this world, in this, in this life. And it's even described that, uh, and there's there's many descriptions of the he about the heavens. We can go on for a very long time. But one of the things that I did want to focus on is that there's compared to this world, there's many things that we are um, that we see that that can be difficulties. But none of those issues exist in the he in the hereafter in in the heavens. And everything is is basically perfection, right? Every fruit it has amazing taste. It's a perfect shape. It's the perfect color. And um, it's easy to access, right? It's not like we have to just climb up trees and go and harvest and go into fields. If you want it, it's very easily accessible to your hand, right? And the, it also describes how people will be relaxed and that the temperatures will be optimal. It won't be too hot. It won't be too cold. And really, that's the perfection of Jannah. And then... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes the surah by saying, uh, 
talking about his majesty, that really the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even greater than anything that's in the earths and anything that's in the heavens. Just as a reminder again to the superiority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why we really should have taqwa. Um, and I know that the topic of heaven is very broad. And inshallah, we can hopefully we can get one of our shayuk to talk about this in more depth going forward. But uh, I hope that this uh, that this reward is kind of motivation for us, alhamdulillah, especially in these last few days of Ramadan. I know we finished the 27th night and then things, people slowly start to slow down a little bit, but maybe more motivation for us to make more dua and really seek, inshallah, the uh, the blessed um, reward of being in Jannah. And maybe all be in Jannah together and may this beautiful masjid that we're looking to build be a, uh, a means by which many people attain Jannah. Um, Without further ado, I know I think we're still having a little bit of, uh, I think well, Brother Anwar is here, he is uh, on. So I think he'll transition and introduce uh, Khari Fawad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. We have uh, Sheikh uh, Fawad ready. You're done with your part, bro? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Okay, okay, we have Sheikh Wad. So we provided uh, the intro, right, to the verses. Yes. Okay, let's go. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. So, uh, we are waiting for Sheikh Wad. Okay, inshallah, when, when he's coming, maybe just uh, I'll you know, talk a couple of minutes. Uh, so we covered uh, Surah Rahman, right? And uh, after that, uh, we will have, uh, then actually, after that, Surah Waqiyah is another Maki. So I know a lot of people are familiar with those Surahs. And then actually there is, and I know we probably will not get a lot of chance to discuss because I, <laughs> We are already 28 Ramadan, one or two days left. Uh, there is a chunk of Madani Surah, actually. It's a big chunk of Madani Surah. We start with Surah Al Hadid, uh, uh, Surah number 57. And then it goes on to like 10 Surahs. All of them, all of them are Madani Surahs. And actually, those are very uh, significant Surahs. And actually, some of them are called the uh, Musabbiha Surahs because it starts with Sabbaha, right? Many of the surahs, like surah, if you go to surah Hadid, and after that, there is surah Saf, there is surah Jum'a. Those are all, uh, you know, uh, starts with Sabbaha or Yusabbihu. But there are a lot of, you know, regulations, uh, uh, actually, and Muslims as a community, right? How do we work as a community? How do we work with people with other faith, you know, people of the book? Those distinctions, actually are, are, you know, are there on those surahs, right? And those are very important things. The other things also is covered on those surah is as you go towards the end of those Madani surahs, uh, like of verse 65, sorry, surah 65, surah 66, you get to surah Tahrim, surah Tala, those talks a lot about also the fa rule, family rules, right? Uh, rules, husband and wife, uh, if there's a divorce, uh, how to, make sure we maintain, you know, if those kind of things happen, how to make sure the honor of the other people are maintained, right? The rights of other people are given. These are also very important. And those are covered in those surahs. I know we'll not get the time to discuss those, uh, you know, we are almost at the end of the month of Ramadan, but I urge all of you, if you get a chance, you know, read and, uh, you know, recite those surahs under the surahs because for us being a complete Muslim, we need to understand all of it. So those surahs are also, those chunk of Madani surahs are very important. And after that, uh, we have Jews 28 and Jews 29 and 30, it's all Maki surah, other than surah Nasr, right? You know, surah Fat, uh, yeah, surah Nasr, right? The hundred, you know. <coughs> so, so that's, you know, those are all Maki surahs, many of us are familiar with. But these surahs, we are probably less familiar, but it's also very important for us to understand. With that, uh, if, uh, Chef Wad, if you're ready, we can get started with the recitation, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Surah Al Rahman today, inshallah. Rahman, inshallah. Inshallah. 
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولمن خاف مقام رب ولی من خوف مقام ربی جن فبی آل ربی کم تو ذوات افنان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان <تصفيق> فيهما عينان تجريان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهما من كل فاكهة زوجان فبأي آلاء ولمن خاف مقام ربه جنتان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فبأي آلاء ربكما بكما تكذبان ذواتا أفنان فبأي آلاء رب بكما تكذبان فيهما عينان تجريان فبأي آلاء رب 
بكما تكذبان فيهما من كل فاكهة زوجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على فرش بطائنها من استبرق وجن الجنتين دان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على فرش بطائنها من استبرق وجن الجنتين دان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهن قاصرات الطرف لم يطمثهن <تصفيق> لم يطمثهن إنس قبلهم ولا جاء فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كأنهن الياقوت والمرجان كأنهن الياقوت والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان هل جزاء الإحسان إلا الإحسان سان 
فِيهِمَا فَاكِهَةٌ وَنَخْلٌ وَرُمَّانٌ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّ بكما تكذبان فيهن خيرات حسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان حور مقصورات في الخيام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان حور مقصورات في الخيام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان لم يطمثن إنس قبلهم ولا جان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على رفرف خضر وعبقري حسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان متكئين على رفرف خضر وعبقري حسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبون ذبان تبارك اسم ربك تبارك اسم ربك ذي الجلال والإكرام صدق الله العظيم الله
جاهزين جزاك الله خير وإياكم أكرم إن شاء الله I think Sheikh Yasif Fahmi is also in charge of joining us today and I don't know if we'll have time to I think he's on already Yes, I'm on. I'm on. Unfortunately, I'm on on my cell phone because um, I'm facing some technical difficulties with my computer. <laughs> but uh, inshallah, should be fine with me. No problem. Inshallah, inshallah, jazakallah. We are all aligned. I had technical difficulties today also. Alhamdulillah. I don't know. It like I I don't know. Alhamdulillah, but uh, now can... your audio is good. Audio is this clear? Yes. Yes, it's clear. Alhamdulillah. Salam alaikum, Shukriya sir. وعليكم السلام مولانا الشيخ كيف حال سيدي الله يبارك فيك الحمد لله كيف احوالكم والعائله الكريمه كله بخير طيبين الله يكرمك الحمد لله رب العالمين اكرمكم الله انت هنا ولا في بوسطن في بوسطن في بوسطن ما شاء الله الله ييسر لكم يا رب الله يجزاك الله يبارك السلام عليكم شيخ ياسي ثانكس فور جويننج الحمد لله بارك الله وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله نو اي واز اي واز تراين تو سي دي وي اول اول هاد سم تكنيكال ايشوز تو دي ايفن اي واز ليت جويننج سو خالد واز رننج ات اول باي هيم سيلف الحمد لله وي كود جوين ثانكس فيري ماتش فور جويننج اي جست جيف اب اون ذا كمبيوتر اند جوين ذا بسم الله وي ار اول ريدي فور يو وين ايفر يو نيد تو ستارت ذا شير بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الاولين وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الاخرين وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملا الاعلى الى يوم الدين يا الله we ask you infinite grace and boundless mercy to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في كل وقت وحين may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in every waking moment and may our every uh, waking moment be in the beautiful loving surrender to la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to always be amongst those who beautifully surrender to the magnificence and the omnipotence of allah the all high the almighty the all great allahumma amin ya rabbal alamin um inshallah i know that uh, you recited with sheikh fuad today the uh, the final um sections of surah uh, ar-rahman if i'm uh, if i'm inshallah hopefully correct in that um and he um as i was understood he was describing the he was he was the reading the, the verses where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described jannah heaven and i wanted to talk a little bit about um the relevance and the importance of the quranic discourse around heaven um in particular with why it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us these beautiful um, descriptions he tells us about these descriptions and 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 what it's supposed to mean for us you know we we very often um, you know we use jannah as a marker of you know um, uh, potential success you know inshallah if i do good then i'm going to get jannah right and i'm going to go to jannah and 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 it's just like a simple transactional thing but jannah um is much more than that you know jannah is a part of the divine design of creation of 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 how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is choosing to uh deal with his creation how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills realities how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses realities and it's important that when we see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to do something meaning when the irada and irada al-ilahiyah is attached to something we should find a particular type of inspiration to dig deeper and to understand more about the purpose and to appreciate something more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's really what i want us to do i want us to appreciate who Allah is it's so integral brothers and sisters in our spiritual journeys as we're reading these ayat of the quran is that we use the ayat to understand something about allah rather than just look at these ayat these signs these verses as you know what am i going to get out of this you know and that's tends to be the human condition you know what am i going to get um how much how pleasurable is it going to be for me <laughs> you know and and that's that's normal that's natural but there's something much more you know and that's 
when we think about Ramadan, you know, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You know, this, this, this act of worship is so that you find, you know, in your heart a deep awareness and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the beautiful things about the fast is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the reward hidden. Allah doesn't tell us how much the reward will be. That's why he says, you know, every, you know, um, every action of the son of Adam is um, his. However, the fast is mine and I reward for it. Meaning that each thing has an apportioned amount of reward except the siyam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps its the knowledge of, of, of its reward to him. And he says, I will give its reward. Meaning, I don't want you to worry so much about the reward. Because when you read the descriptions of Jannah, at the end of the day, you know, you read Jannat, Tajreem and Tahti al Anhar. These are heavens that have rivers, you know, Fajarna Fiha min al Uyun, that you have these beautiful springs that, that gush forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, you know, the different types of fruits and vegetations and the trees and the nature of the trees. And, and the nature of the trees, if Surah Rahman, the nature of the trees when you first enter into Jannah, the trees are high. And then that's this, this, that's like the, the, the initial Jannah. And then as you're elevating in the stations of Jannah, the trees become closer. And then you're mutakit, you're, you're, you're just lying down on a comfortable, uh, 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 you know, wisada, uh, something, that, a comfortable pillow, something to, to lean on. And then the tree is right there accessible for you. So while you're lounging on, you know, on your comfortable bed, you have food right there accessible to your fingertips, etc., etc. All these descriptions. And then ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma la ra'at. That which no eye has ever seen. Wala udunun samiat. That no eye ear has ever um, heard of. Wala khatra ala qalbi bashar. That's what how the Prophet said in the end, describes it, that, that you can't even have fathomed it or imagined it in your heart. So you can't even, we can't even conceive of what it is. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fusilat that, that, that Jannah is where everyone will have their 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 right? You will find everything that you desire. A, a man, a woman, whatever it is you desire, you will find in Jannah. So that's, you know, people say, well, men get this and women get that. No, no. In Jannah, you will find in it what you desire. So what we first conceive of when thinking about this is the giver and Allah is the giver and Allah gives and Allah gives abundantly. And that's why, you know, in the middle of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in verse number 60, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is it that, you know, that the, 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 the gift or the result of ihsan is ihsan? Meaning that when we exist in this dunya as amongst the muhsineen, those who, who try to be excellent and beautiful in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah rewards with ihsan. And the ihsan in this case is far greater, far more profound, is the ihsan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And that we give a little bit and Allah gives a lot. Prophet sallallahu inna a'taynaka al-kawthar. You know, O Muhammad, we will give you the kawthar. And the kawthar is the abundant, abundant, abundance Meaning not just the river, you know, people say, oh, it's, it's, a, it's just a river in Jannah. No, it's, it's, yes, it's a river and it's the, it's the life source of the afterlife. And it's a huge deal. But the Prophet ﷺ is being told that you are going to be given abundantly, you know, and that you will find. Allah will give you and will give you and will give you until you are radi, you are content. So when we hear all of these descriptions, the first thing that this should do for our hearts is say, Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah that this is who Allah is. You know, Ya Allah, we, we praise you and we thank you. And we really are in awe of your generosity. That you are, you know, ajwadul ajwadeen. That you are the most generous of the most generous. And that you are merciful and kind. And that you are al-wadud. You are the one who loves unconditionally. And you are ash-shakur. You are the one who gives without receiving thanks in return. But you give to your servants abundantly. And this is, you know, when we read, so, so inshallah, when you're reading the description of Jannah in Surah Al-Rahman or Surah Fussilat or all the other places in the Quran, 
I want us to first and just foremost pause before we start getting into like, oh, give me the details and what is it going to look like and what is it going to feel like? And of course, Allah is giving us descriptions, so it's good to be enticed. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to be enticed and to yearn for Jannah, you know, but, but the first station is to just appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really. And, and it's a moment of humility. You know, you know when, when, when you have a big celebration, let's say your loved one puts on a big celebration for you and everyone's just partying and having a good time and everyone's laughing. And then, you know, you go to your loved one in a quiet moment and you just, you hug them and you kiss them and you say, I just want to say, thank you so much for this. You know, this really means everything so much to me. There's a moment that I want us to just turn to Allah. How many of us genuinely, and think about this, have ever thanked Allah for Jannah? We haven't been, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet, inshallah. And may Allah gift us Jannah. But how many of us in this dunya have thanked Allah for Jannah? Just by what? Just by reading its descriptions. Nothing else. I'm not, you know, inshallah, we, we, we are granted Jannah. Inshallah, we are granted the highest levels of Jannah. But I want you to take that moment, inshallah, tonight, as you're entering into your salah, you're praying your tarawiyah. And you say, Ya Allah, I just finished reading the description of Jannah in Surah Ar-Rahman. And I want to say, thank you. I thank you for Jannah. And I thank you for this, for, for, for this, this generous expression that you really, you know, of course, I don't want to speak about Allah in these terms, but I, just to bring it closer to our minds. Ya Allah, you really put thought into this. You know, you really put thought into how you want to convey your message to us. That Allah, Allah is not blunt. Allah is not dry. He is above all shortcomings. But Allah, in His, in his divine revelation, is so beautifully eloquent and descriptive and gives us that which entices us. You know, the subtleties that are found in the descriptions of Jannah are very beautiful. You know, فِيهِنَّ خَيْرَاتٌ حِسَانٌ You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing the, the spouse in Jannah as being someone who has beautiful, beautiful looks, you know, so externally very beautiful, but, you know, so it's, it's hisan, so it's, you know, wow, that's really attractive. And then it's khairat. Khairat is an indication of what? Of the beautiful character. So it's, it's true inward beauty and true outward beauty. You know, so Allah is telling us, I know that you may be in the dunya. <laughs> you know, look at look at our relationships today with our spouses. You know, it just, we, we love our spouses, but we get a little bored. We get a little this, we get a little tired, we get a little fed up. We, we, we you know, things change, things alter. Inward states aren't always the best. How the relationship was in the beginning is not the, how the relationship is today. But alhamdulillah, we love our spouses. And, and but it's, you know, it's, it's work. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, rela- it's a labor of love. Okay. <laughs> our relationships in this dunya are labors of love. And alhamdulillah, you know, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in, jun- in Jannah, it's a whole other reality. It's pure pleasure, pure elative pleasure. One that, you know, does not get old. It does not, it's not something that, you know, you get fed up with. Or you get exhausted uh, with no, no. You, it's yatajaddad, 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 and it, and that you know you can think of the moments in life where you've had like just a rush of pleasure and a rush of serious joy, you know, um, and then and then multiply that by infinity, and then you and then and then constantly, and that's the nature of of the reality of jannah, and and the description of how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala layers things in jannah. And, 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 and how he compares and contrasts the realities of this life to the realities of the afterlife. There's a lot of intricacy in it. And inshallah, I mean, we don't have time to go through it in detail today, but I just want to give you a flavoring so that next time when you read, I really want us to appreciate what Allah has done here for us. You know, I just, I don't want us to just read the Quran in a very like mechanical, blunt fashion. You know, sometimes like little kids, who when it's, it's uh, you know, it's Eid, <laughs> or, you know, inshallah, alhamdulillah, we have Eid in a few days, and may Allah make it a joyous day for us all, Ya Rabb. And the gift comes, and, and let's say you're a parent, and you put so much thought into how you prepared the gift, uh, you know, the, the, the wrapping you used, where you put it in the house, uh, what you wrote on the card, 
when you gave it to the child, the setup, you did so much, you put in so much effort. And then the kid comes in and just like rambunctiously grabs the gift, rips off the thing. Like, I don't care. Like, give me the gift, give me the gift, give me the gift, right? You know, I don't want us to be that way with the Quran. I want us to be, you know, gentle, thoughtful, really appreciating all the subtle details that went into it, all the thought that went into it, right? So that's that's the first real point that I wanted to emphasize is just is 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 the disposition of shukr and hamd because fundamentally our relationship with Allah is predicated upon shukr and hamd. abdan shakura. So that should I not be a thankful servant at the end of the verse of, of Shahru Ramadan, la'allakum tashkurun, so that you are thankful. But for me to genuinely be thankful, brothers and sisters, I have to appreciate. And to appreciate requires what? It requires that I, I actually put my own thought into it and that I analyze it a little bit deeper. And then when I really see what it is, then I appreciate it. I say, alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah. So, that's point number one about the discourse around Jannah in the afterlife. Is there everything okay, brother? Anwar, did you want to say something? Or? No, I'm okay, brother. Alhamdulillah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, now, so the, the verses around uh, Jannah begin right at uh, verse number 46. Now, before 46, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a very stark description of Jahannam. And it's, it's, it's very stark. And when you finish reading, when you finish reading those verses, the, the emotion that should immediately be induced within us is an emotion of fear. Wow, that was scary. That is objectively a scary reality. The torment of the afterlife. What's going to happen in hellfire? Who is thrust into the, the depth of Jahannam? But that is a reality. You know, a naru haq. Well, Jannah to Haq, not is truth. Hellfire is truth, and Jannah is truth. And so Allah tells us about how people's innards are going to be dragging with chains, and those who are going to be, you know, drinking molten lava. It's it's a very stark description. Let's not let's not make no mistakes about it. Ultimately, to induce yes, fear, and fear in the context of dealing with Allah, the Almighty, Al Hakim. Right, Al Hakim, Ahkam Al Hakimin, the one who is Al Aziz, the one who is Al Kabir Al Mutaal, the one who is Al Rahman Al Rahim. In that context, yes, it is very, very suitable that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala manifests Himself in a manner that is that is majestic, and that puts us in a place of, hey, check yourself, you're a humble servant, and that's our realities. We are humble servants. So it's not to say, well, oh my God, you know, look at these harsh descriptions. Like how can Allah ever be described as being merciful when he's created something so harsh? No, 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 no. We are in no, that is way above our pay grade to even, to even insinuate that Allah is doing something that is unbecoming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acting from purely within his standing uh, as Arham al-Rahimin. And he is Al-Adl, he is the just, and he is Jalla Fi Ula, the one who has dominion over all realities. He is Al-Hakim, he is the all-wise, and the one who is due all respect. He is Al-Alim, the all-knowing. He is Al-Khabir, the one who knows the subtleties of every reality. So when Allah creates and Allah wills, those are realities that become signs. So Jahannam becomes a sign to say, wow, I have to be very thoughtful about who I'm dealing with here, right? I'm dealing with Allah. That's why the entryway into the discourse around Jannah, which is in Ayah 46, what does Allah say? وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً It is those who, who, are, who, who, who fear the station and the standing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the maqam of Allah. They have Jannatan. They have two Jannat. And of course, there's a lot of discussion in the books of Tafsir. Or what? What are the two Jannat? And you know, um, and Wallahu Taala Ala wa Alam. Some say there is, you know, that you receive a, you know, a pre-Jannah in the dunya and another Jannah in the afterlife, the actual Jannah in the afterlife. Or some say that it is the Jannah 
that comes about from the, the what we maintain as inward realities and the Jannah that is then coming from outward realities, etc. But that's not where I want to focus right now. I want to focus on this notion of wali man khafa maqama rabbihi, those who fear the station of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his maqam, jannatan, they will receive these, these jannah. And, and, and fear, brothers and sisters, is such a healthy emotion when it's managed and governed correctly. And when it's directed at the right things, it becomes a very healthy emotion because that emotion, when you have it, it really helps balance out the false hope that may make me uh, apathetic or lazy at times. It keeps me awakened. You know, I have to be thoughtful and, you know, you know, the, the, as a, you know, think of it as a parent and you have a child, you know, a, a good, good, healthy, not, not an exaggerated amount, a healthy amount of fear is good to protect your children. You have to be vigilant. You have to be aware so that your children can be carefree and do whatever they want. You have to be someone who's more vigilant and fearful of potential outcomes. So fear when when we when we experience it ma'allah then the result is reward beautiful reward but it's not just fear it's also hope and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does want us to appreciate his beauty because Allah is jameel wa yuhibbul jamal and he wants us to have hope in that so hope and fear they induce this and so brothers and sisters yes when I'm going to talk, when I'm going to do something, something that I know is potentially very displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an act, something that I do online, something that I do on TV, something that I do with my limbs, something that I do with my eyes, the way I speak, the way I dress, the way I conduct myself, whatever it may be, something that is genuinely potentially displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is fear that should kick in and say, wait, I have to be very careful here. You know, I'll have to be very careful for a number of reasons. I don't want to, number one, receive the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But perhaps what's an even more elevated station of fear, because I don't want fear to just be a purely, you know, negative thing, right? Negative attribute related to the potential uh, pains of hellfire. But I fear that I would let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala down. I fear that I would do against the one who is so generous and kind and so beautiful. I would fear that I would ever, you know, quote unquote, wrong him. Jalla fi ula. I fear that I would ever disobey him. I fear that I would ever disrespect Allah jalla fi ula. And so fear has grades itself. There is the fear, which is, I just don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to be dragged in Jahannam, which is, a, which, is, which is fear that exists and can be very healthy without exaggeration, of course. But then there's also the higher level of fear of, <clears throat> I fear Allah because I love Allah. And I don't want to ever, you know, I, we've all experienced that with people in our lives, the fear of disappointment. At the end of the day, I was just, I, I really didn't want to disappoint my father. I didn't really, really, really want to disappoint my mother. I didn't want to disappoint my friend. And, and it induces fear. So, you know, I, I, you know, fear is healthy because it helps me not to act so mindlessly and so haplessly. We develop sometimes routines in our lives and practices and behaviors that become standard habits, you know. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress, the relationships we maintain, how we have relationships with opposite genders, how we have, how we, how we make our employment, how we spend our nights, what we watch, what we allow ourselves to watch, habits, 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 all these habits, if they're not checked, if there's no check and balance to see like, or these standard norms, or even my entire, you know, life, my identity today, who I've become, like who I've become, what am I? really in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it been checked and balanced in that mizan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rafa'a as-sama'a wa wada'a al-mizan he lifted the skies and he placed the scale so in the mizan is there tughyan because I don't want to be someone who is who is in a state of tughyan that my scale is completely lopsided right one side is all the way down the other one's all the way up 
and I'm walking around completely lopsided in this dunya, you know, thinking that I am, you know, fi khair, but look at my life, you know, and, and you begin to understand perhaps that, you know, you know, people will say, I just don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why my life is going the way it is. Like, okay, this is going and that's going and I have this and I have that, whatever, but look at me, look at my life, look at how it's imbalanced. Well, there must be some level of imbalance, tughiyan, that has occurred. And the tughiyan usually happens when there's not a healthy balance. And in the spiritual realm, it is the two wings of hope and fear that are so essential, so essential in the spiritual life. So these, this is how Allah describes those who then enter and deserve Jannah. And then lastly, towards the end of the surah. So I wanted to just highlight some of these, how Allah manifests. So he manifests, number one, with ihsan. وَهَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْإِحْسَانِ Is it not the result of ihsan is ihsan? So that should compel us to be what? Muhsini. Beautiful, both inwardly and outwardly. And then that appreciation of Allah's ihsan should compel us towards shukr and hamd and humility. And then also the mindfulness towards fear. And the, the role, the critical role that fear plays in my life. And then lastly, in the end of the surah, now throughout the whole surah, we know that it is In which of these signs do you deny? Which of these signs, you know, allow you to be ungrateful? Because that's really what's inherently yani, These 33, 33 times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this verse Which of these signs do you deny? You know, which of these signs allow us to be ungrateful? And that's, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us a rhetorical question That, is, that, is, that, 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 carries, that carries a level of blame And it carries a level of matter of factness you know, what else? It's almost as if, Taban Ta'ala, Allah, you know, I, when we speak on Allah's behalf, we have to be very careful not to, you know, speak in a manner that's, but of course, you know, Astaghfirullah, I'm not even speaking on behalf of Allah. I'm, 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 I'm trying to caricature how perhaps this is to be articulated just to bring it closer to our hearts and minds. May Allah forgive me and guide me. But it's almost as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like, what else do you want to see? What else do you want to know? What else can I show you? I've shown you everything. I've shown you this Quran. And I've detailed in this Quran the beauty and the bounty and the bountifulness of these signs and the intricacy. I've, I've shown you the generosity. I've shown you uh, how much I give, how much I give and I give abundantly. I've also shown you the, the, the worrisome realities and the potential painful outcomes. I've shown you signs in the creation. I've shown you. You know, and this tikrar, this repetition, you know, when the companions heard it, as you know, the Prophet is reciting the surah. It's like it, you know, it, it makes you literally sit up in your chair. It makes the hair on the back of your heads. Like if you were ever sitting in a classroom, or you're sitting in front of your father or your mother, and they've prepared a speech for you, and they're gonna really, you know, if a professor, for example, caught their student cheating, their students cheating, and they prepared a speech, and the the, the students were completely oblivious, and they come in, and the speech is articulated, and it's like. And it just it comes your your stomach sinks and your heart drops and you get you you get nervous you start to sweat it's like what is going on here, and so Ar Rahman Surah Al Rahman, it is the bride it is the bride of the Quran you know in in terms of its beauty and Ar Rahman this is Ar Rahman manifesting himself, and so it's like when Ar Rahman is speaking to us, the one that we love so much the one that we respect so much, the one that we feel his grace and his mercy upon us so much is now saying to us, I just said it five times. Allah says it 33 times. What is that? What is that just makes me stop and say, okay, I'm here, yeah, Allah, Allah. And then, you know, he intersperses them between the descriptions, you know. Look at, look at this, subhanAllah. It's Allah, Allah, Allah's showing us something very critical here. 
through repetition and through grabbing our attention through this very profound uh, form of expression to say, hey, look at me, pay attention to me, pay attention to what I am rolling out for you, pay attention to what I have revealed, pay attention to what I have brought down to you, pay attention to whom I have sent you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pay attention to this Quran that I have revealed upon you, pay attention to this creation, pay attention to these children that I have gifted you as your children, pay attention to the spouse that I have gifted you as your spouse, pay attention to the risk that I have bestowed upon you, pay attention to your health, Pay attention to the ummah, pay attention to the community, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Don't become oblivious. Don't become deluded. Don't become wayward. Don't become forgetful. Because all of these signs, they indicate fundamentally the divine essence. And then at the end of the surah, as we close, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ تَبَارَكَ Tabaraka. Ismu Rabbika Zil Jalali Wal Ikra. Tabaraka. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this powerful, powerful ending of, of, of the surah, when he says Tabaraka, see Tabaraka means Ta'ala. Ta'ala means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far above. He's far beyond. Tabaraka. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is due. All of the adulation and all of the deference. But see, the word tabaraka also carries within it the meaning of baraka, the bestower of blessings, the bestower of realities that when we appreciate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in the response to a little, Allah gives a lot, we understand that the reality of tabaraka, because the way Allah gives is unlike anyone else who gives. In, no one of the created realm gives the way Allah gives, because Allah gives the way that only someone who is genuinely in a state of tabaraka in a very high, lofty, rich, and not just rich in terms of possession of material means, which Allah possesses, all possesses, but the richness, uh, it's, you know, people say like, that person is cheap, you know, they have a lot, but they give, you know, from right underneath their teeth, it's like, they have to, you have to like, pull it out of them, so it's like, they have a cheapness to them, there's a, there's a miserly quality, but then you have those who in the created realm, who give, and they give with an open heart, and they give as much as they can. You say, that person has rina. They have wealth. There, there's a rich soul right there, right? So there's, a, there's a, so we, we attribute it as being a lofty reality. Fatabaraka is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives, and He gives in a manner that is befitting Allah. And He gives in a way that says, I want to spoil you. <laughs> you know, I want to give you everything. And I give it from a place of rahmah and a place of mahabba. And Allah is also indicating to us that there is, there is a secret in this dunya. If you, if you capture it in your life, then you will not feel the hardships and the pains of this dunya the way you experience it which is when we bring the barakah of Allah into our lives. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through this, this tajalli, this particular manifestation, he's saying all of these signs is so that you interact with them in a thoughtful manner, in a conscious manner, that will ultimately beget that I will put barakah in your life. And when I put barakah in your life, what happens? Something that seems impossible, becomes not only possible, becomes seamless in its nature. The thing that you were terrified the most about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates in ways that you could have never fathomed. You could never have imagined how would you have completed one, two, three, four, five, but bi barakatillah, the, the barakah, the blessing was put in the time, was put in your body, was put in your thoughts, was put in your energy, was put in your feelings, was put into your emotions, was put into you,
and around you. Allahumma barik lakuma wa alaykuma wa feekuma. Right? This dua of, you know, oh Allah, bless them inwardly and bless them outwardly and shower blessings upon them. Why? Because when we are infused with barakah, we are now being guided to the, with divine essence to our reality. So we're no longer, you know, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, لَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ Don't, Ya Allah, don't relinquish me to myself even for the blink of an eye because a lot of us, we suffer in this life because we are doing this stuff on our own. We are relying on ourselves and we're not relying on Allah. We're not summoning the blessings and the barakah of Allah into our lives. And the way we do that is by appreciating these signs. Tabarakah. See, after all of this, Allah is saying, Tabaraka, Tabaraka, Ismu Rabbik, Ismu Rabbik, the name of your Rabb, you know, Dhil Jalali Wal Ikram, Dhil Jalali Wal Ikram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is who has Jalal, which is Al Istighna Ul Mutlaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is categorically need free. Don't ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs us. No, no, I give you. I am, Allah is tabarak, he's high, you know. And he is dil jalal, he is the one who is categorically need-free. And he is dil jalali wal ikram. And dil ikram, al ikram means the categorical and the absolute fadl, the grace and the generosity. You see? Jalal and Ikram. Jalal and Ikram. And, and, and that's who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the, that's the Rabb that is very high, you know, in the sense of his, 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 his uh, self-subsistence. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very close to us. And that he is profoundly generous and graceful in giving in every, every nuance of our existence. And so, yes, Allah is Dil Jalali Wal Ikram. He is Dil He's Dil Ikram. Where? When I'm by myself and I'm really feeling anxious, I'm feeling lonely. Then it's the it's the graceful, the generous, the one who gives abundantly, who is there to say, "Summon me, and I will facilitate these realities for you." You know, my teachers, whenever I would ask them to make, you know, yeah, Sheikhna, what dua can I make for you? Put barakah in my time, put barakah in my mind, put barakah in my health, put barakah in my family, put barakah in my deen, put barakah, put barakah, put barakah, meaning they realize the secret. I can't actually thrive in this dunya without the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't, I won't be able to thrive in this dunya without an, a, that divine infusion of blessing. You know, there's a reason why brothers and sisters we are all almost regularly and constantly saying, I don't know how to figure this out. I can't do this anymore. Isn't that such a common thing on our tongues? I can't do this anymore. Because that's an actual statement of truth. I cannot do this, <laughs> you know? Because you know what? We cannot do this. That's the fact. Our nature is we can't do this on our own. So why do we think? And why do we continue to do it on our own and not summon and channel? Through ihsan, wahal jazaul ihsan is not the result or the gift of ihsan. Ihsan. So what is ihsan? Ah, and ta'bul Allah ka an nakatara that you worship Allah as if you see Him. So what does that mean? I worship. I pray. I see Allah. I give sadaqa. I see Allah. I help my family. I cook my 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 dinner. I take care of the laundry. I I take my my uh, my parent to the hospital. I take my child to the to the to the dentist's office. I go to school. I drop off an activity. I clean up my bedroom. I do. I do. I do. I write. I read. I read. I see Allah. 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 And in that state, I am in a state of loving surrender in ibadah and worship. I'm praying my salawat. I'm reading my Quran. I'm making my dhikr. I'm doing my making my dua. I have hope in of Allah and I have fear in Allah. So when I have hope, fear, I am being muhsin in my actions, in my thoughts, in my behaviors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then infuses me with blessings.
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to appreciate the Quranic discourse, to understand and appreciate why Allah communicates the way he does to us. May we be in awe of Allah. May we, may we be thankful to Allah. May we truly feel his blessings upon us. May we be mesmerized by this divine revelation. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakumullah khair. And may Allah accept us in these last coming nights of Ramadan and make us of those who, 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 who leave this month in the best of states. May Allah help us and allow us to leave the, the month of Ramadan having been having received complete and categorical forgiveness. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbi. Zakallah khair. Zakallah shaykh for the lecture. And we definitely saw it's a change of life's perspective, you know, looking at everything through the prism of Quran and through, you know, our love and hope and fear for Allah. Uh, there is a couple of questions, but uh, before that, I just want to ask one question because I saw it, you know, from the community itself. Now that with the situation we are in, you cannot go for Eid prayers and things like yeah. that. So on the Eid day, uh, what can we do? Like, should we pray at home? And, you know, uh, you know some question on that, just to make sure the community fully understands what can we do at home in this situation. Um, inshallah ta'ala, you know, um, uh, and, and and the way you will pray Eid at home is the way you would have prayed it uh, in in uh, in the in the gathering. So you'll pray two units, inshallah. In the first rakah, you will do the takbira. You say Allahu Akbar, and then you recite um, uh, according to uh, the Shafi'i school and in the in uh, in the Maliki school and others. You will recite seven takbirat, right? So you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and then you recite the Fatiha. And then, inshallah, if you have it memorized, you can recite Sabbih Isma Rabbik Al-A'la, you can recite al ghashia And then in the second raka'ah, you say Allahu Akbar when you're coming back, which is called Takbiratul Intiqal, the transitional takbira when you're coming to stand back up. And then you say Allahu Akbar five times or six times, depending on the madhab, but inshallah, you know, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's do it six times, <laughs> inshallah ta'ala. And um, and uh, and then you recite the Fatiha and you recite Qul A'udhu Rabb al You can recite, uh, if you haven't recited Ghashiya in the first rakah, you can recite it in the, in the second rakah. Um, or you can recite any Quran that you know. These are the, the recommended uh, verses to recite, to be recited. And then inshallah, um, in the, uh, in the uh, and then you do your Taslim, you do your Salam. And then, you know, you wouldn't have to do this at home, but inshallah, in the spirit of maintaining the, 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 the practices of Eid, then you can just give a small reminder to your family. Um, inshallah, um, I will be, um, you know, giving a small reminder for, for the community. Um, uh, inshallah, so you guys can, 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 can have it streamed in your homes. Yes. Uh, I'll be sharing a reminder about uh, that, that idea. So you can pray the two rakat and then you can listen to the reminder. And uh, inshallah, that would be your Eid, and then give gifts and uh, spread joy. Don't fight, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, 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 so the prayer at home, everybody prays with their family at home as a jama'ah, yeah. right? Your family, inshallah, pray jama'ah with your family, inshallah. Yes, inshallah, inshallah. Uh, thank you very much for the clarification. Just one question on on the description you are providing. If you have a couple of minutes, just to yeah. uh, the question was more like you know the descriptions that we have for heaven. Uh, are these more allegorical, uh, symbolical, or is it more literal, right? And then, and for that matter, actually, I will extend that question. I have heard actually people, some people tell me, uh, especially that hey, the, the description of hellfire and the fire, those are all more symbolic. They are not really meant to be, right? Uh, you know, some people, you know, have that kind of, you know, the thinking or, so I don't know what's your kind of thinking about it. Um, you know, there, 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 there we don't have, um, any evident indication um, from the Quranic text. So when when you are when a claim is going to be made that something is allegorical, um, um, it there has to be evident and clear reasons to go to the uh, to the allegory before uh, 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 you know um, that 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 is just you know strikingly obvious from the text. Um, you know, so for example, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Jidaran yuridu an fa There is a wall that wants to fall. Do walls want to fall? No, of course, walls don't want to fall. But this is a type of expression that is indicating that 
you know what, that this wall is so, you know, it, it, it's like so ready to fall. It looks like it actually has a desire and a will and it has like a conscious and it wants to fall. Or ask the village. Do we ask the physical village? Do we ask the walls? Do we ask the huts and the homes and the and the donkeys and the people? Or do we ask, you know, do we ask the people of the qarya? What's, what's evident here is wasal ahl al qarya. Ask the people of the village. So there, the, in in Arabic language, um, and and then in the entire you know the entire you know collection of the surah, there has to be clear indications that we have to go to allegory before we can you know disclaim that this is actually an indication of what will be. And so on that note, and of course this requires a lot more treatment from an, from like an academic perspective. But on that note, there is no evident indication to say this is all just allegory. You know, now there there is a component here which is Allah is telling us that you know what He is describing to us is the thing that is closest to what we as human beings may understand or appreciate, given our contexts and our realities and our histories and our experiences and how we eat and consume and the nature of this dunya. Allah is giving us descriptives that are going to be closer to our uh, assumptions or ability to process and make sense. So in that in that sense, yeah, the, that what Allah is describing in terms of our knowledge of what those things are, no, the palm when Allah says, you know, a, a pomegranate tree, is it going to be the pomegranate tree like the one that I eat in the dunya? No, not exactly, because Allah has said in other places that you have not seen these realities before, but they are realities. And 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 so, um, uh, you know, we we affirm that these punishments are realities. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he was on the Isra and the Mi'raj, and he gave very descriptive. Uh, uh, you know, examples of the punishments. They were an indication of that these were actual real punishments that had transpired. And then, you know, to close, inshallah, and, and I, you know, I've heard this discourse in the past, but regardless, okay, regard, let's say you may be convinced that it's allegorical. That's fine. But what does that mean? Does that mean that the punishments are going to be any less uh, difficult? You know what I mean? So whether it's allegorical or not, although the, there's no indication that to say that they are allegorical, but regardless, um, uh, or I mean, there's no evident contextual evidence that should force us to go towards allegory right away, right? Because there is no, uh, there's no read to disclaim the evident of it. But uh, regardless, we still uh, affirm that hellfire is very difficult and there, it, it is full of torment and wrath and pain. And Jannah is beautiful and luxurious and full of joy, etc. So. You know, that doesn't negate the existence of uh, the, the reality of hell and the reality of heaven. Yes. That's a color fire. Well, thank you very much. I think that's, uh, alhamdulillah, that's uh, a is good uh, understanding um, for us to kind of, uh, you know, because even language is a vehicle, is a limited vehicle for us to understand those things which are beyond the domain, right? Yeah. That's a color fire. Inshallah, if you want to make some quick dua for all of us and we'll, then we'll close, inshallah. Yeah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these uh, last and remaining nights of Ramadan to accept us as his loving servants. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and our shortcomings and our weaknesses. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beautify us with the beauty of the Quran and the beauty of the Sunnah and the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, we ask you to bless this community, the Al-Falah community, to bless the, 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 the families of Al-Falah, to bless the children of Al-Falah, to bless the, the, the husbands and the wives of Al-Falah. We ask you to grant all of the, our community members beautiful Islam and beautiful Iman and beautiful Ihsan and to in, enrich in the relationships, to enrich in the bonds, to remove the hardships and the difficulties and the fitan. Ya Allah, we ask you to beautify and harmonize the hearts in our community. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us a community that is truly a model community that, that you love. And that you look upon us, you look upon with an eye of rahmah, an eye of mercy, and an eye of acceptance. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. We ask you to make us amongst those who will attain salvation in this in this dunya, that we will attain salvation from Jahannam. Ya Allah, we ask you of those who will be gifted the categorical afu that you have promised in these nights. Allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhibul afu wa faafu anna Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Wa sallallahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil. I mean, Jazakallah Khair, Shaykh, thank you very much for your lectures uh, throughout the month of Ramadan, inshallah. Uh, we look forward to your uh, 
lecture uh, on Eid day, and inshallah after Ramadan, inshallah we'll. I think we're going to be together on Friday for Juma for Juma Khatira. As inshallah, well. yes, yes, we also have you for Friday, inshallah. So inshallah, yeah. we'll definitely hear more from you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, with that, uh, we're at the end of the program. With the Subhanak Rabbi Karubi Lizati Amma Yasifun. Wassalamu alaikum. Wassalamu alaikum. Everybody, Wassalamu alaikum.